Hey guys, welcome to your backbending practice today. Today is all about backbending and I do love backbending for a couple of reasons. First of all, it opens you up, it invigorates you, it kind of checks into your um, courage and stamina a little bit so you can kind of tap into that when you do backbends. It also requires a, quite a bit of strength. So a lot of people think in order to backbend you have to be super bendy. Um, I tend to, tend to disagree with that. It actually incorporates a lot of strength into it. So um, if you want to get stronger, you want to open up yourself and um, feel invigorated and courageous, come along with me and do some backbending. So we'll sit in Virasana today. That's hero's pose. You have two options. You can sit on a block. And if you do that, I'll do it from the side. I'm going to place the block down on the width, on the wide part, and hug the block together with your ankles. So it looks like that. And then you'll sit down on the block, just like so. Or you can take a blanket and roll it up and sit on it, uh, similar to the block. So the knees will come ahead of the blanket. Knees come together, pull the flesh part of the calf out of the way, and just sit tall here. Go ahead and draw the palms together to heart center. Lift the chest, roll the shoulders back, gently close the eyes, and we'll start here. Draw the awareness, draw your attention toward your breath, and especially the breath at the heart center. So noticing the breath in the chest. Just lift the chest as you breathe. Notice the retraction of the breath as you exhale and create space all over the body. So as your chest lifts, create space in the arms, underneath the arms, sides of the neck. Noticing the space in your temples, sides of the face, creating space in between the eyebrows. And allow the back of your body to really support the front body. So as you breathe in, you're expanding in the front body, but you're also observing how tall you're seated, your spine. You're grounding down and rooting through your sitting bones. And just be aware, be present. Two more breaths. anything now on the next exhale, any tension, any sort of distractions, and bowing the head toward the heart. Blink your eyes open, lift your gaze up, and release your hands and come off your height here. So we'll start with a seated twist. Go ahead and come into Sukhasana. You can sit on the blanket or just leave it off to the side here. So crossing the legs. If you have a habitual leg, you tend to cross in front. Usually for me, my left shin is always in front. Just bring it to the back. Roll the shoulders back again. Lifting up and reaching up the left arm. Sweep it across and lift the chest here. Open the chest up. You can even gaze up here. So trying not to lean too far back on the arm, just lifting up and then coming back to center. Release the arm, twisting second side. Reach up with the right hand and back of the hand to the outside. And then roll the right shoulder open as you lift the chest up. You can even lean back just slightly. Looking up here. One full inhale and exhale. And then coming back to center. We'll come to hands and knees here. For Marjorie or cat cow, spread the fingers wide. Knees underneath the hips, wrists under shoulder. Round the spine as you exhale. Dome the back, reach the upper back up, press the shins down, press the hands down, and then reverse it. Pull the chest forward, roll the shoulder back, and lift the tail. Exhale, round again. Inhale, open up, feel the back body moving toward the front body, and open the chest. Two more. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, round again, reaching down, pressing the hand down. Inhale, opening up. And then come to forearms here. Parallel the forearms, 
spread the fingers wide, walk the knees back, curl the toes under, and either staying on the knees or come into a knee forearm plank. Sorry, a forearm plank or a knee forearm plank. So lift the knees if you're doing so, press down through the hands and forearms and pull the chest forward. And then lower to knees and gently roll yourself down to where your hips are on the ground. Elbows underneath the shoulders, point the toes back and hug the legs again, a little bit closer to one another. Draw the navel in. And then curl the toes under. Let's do a forearm plank again. Either lifting the hips, coming halfway here with the knees down, or all the way up. Press the thighs up, move the chest forward, open the chest here. Long in the neck and spine, holding here. Think about the inner thighs now, wrapping up toward the sky. Press down through the forearms. One more breath here. Slowly lower down the knees, the hips and lift the chest, open the chest here, a little bit of a back bend. And then coming all the way down, draw the hands back, palms down so hands are next to the ribs. Inhale, lift the chest, low cobra, point the toes, inner thighs spin up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift the chest, open the chest up, roll the shoulders back, exhale down. One more, inhale, lift up, reach up, open up here, strong in the legs. Exhale, come to plank. So curl the toes under, either knee plank or lift the legs up, coming all the way up into plank, trying not to let the hips dip, and then coming into down dog. Okay, finding a lot of length in the back. You can have a soft bend in the knees if the hamstrings feel a little bit tight. Opening up the sides of the body here. Head can hang. Wrap the triceps down. Holding here for another breath. And bend the knees. Look forward and step forward. Come halfway up. Hands can come to blocks here if you'd like. Place the fingertips to just below the knees or on the knees here. Lift the chest. Find a back bend here now. Open the chest. Roll the shoulders back. But draw the ribs in. Tailbone is long. Exhale, fold. Two more. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Rise to stand. Inhale, press the feet down. Looking up and drawing the hands down to the heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Push the hips back and fold. Lengthen your spine. Step the right leg back. Knee comes behind the hips and lift up into Anjaneyasana. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Lift the chest and find a bit of a back bend here. So open the chest up without overarching the lower back. So you don't really want to dump into that lower back. Draw the ribs in. So move the back of the body through the chest here. And then exhale, step forward, forward, fold. Inhale, rise to stand. And same thing, second side. Push the hips back. Exhale, long in the spine. Step the left leg back. Uncurl the toes. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Inhale, lift the chest. So again, stretching the front here of the hip flexors, the psoas, lift, find a bit of a back bend while drawing the ribs in. Inhale, lift and reach, and then exhale, forward fold. Step in, fold in, sweep up, look up, reach up, and draw the hands to the heart. Inhale, use the energy now, lift and reach. Exhale, fold all the way down. Right leg steps back, inhale, find a bit of a back bend, lift and rise, coming into a high plank. Lower all the way down, chaturanga. You can always come to the knees, low cobra here, inhale. Exhale to down dog. 
and step your right leg forward, lower the left knee down, low lunge, inhale, lift and rise, reach up, exhale, forward fold, inhale, lifting up, standing tall, and exhale, palms to the heart, inhale, sweep up, look up, reach up, and fold, left leg steps back, low lunge, inhale, lift, so listen to your body here, coming into high plank, lower all the way down to the mat, Bhujangasana, uncurl the toes. If you ever have any issues in the lower back, finding dog down, down dog, use your ability to negotiate what you need to do in each pose. So if you feel pain, perhaps you need to reduce range. In this Uttanasana, keep a soft bend in the knees. Inhale, rising up to stand. And palms to heart center, especially with back bending. Listen to your body here. Inhale, finding Utkatasana, so fierce pose. Bend the knees, draw the booty forward, or the tailbone's long and the ribs are in. Lift the chest. Now face forward here. The arms can do a lot of things. The elbows can bend. The hands can kind of stray away from each other. In our Utkatasana, we try to wrap the triceps forward, almost like you're going to throw a bucket of water up overhead. Straighten the arms and find a back bend here. Now, that upper chest in between the shoulder blades coming through the chest here. One more breath and then fold in, exhale. Let the head hang for a moment. Press the feet down. Inhale, rise to stand. And Utkatasana again. We won't stay as long here. So lower the hips. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees. Step back into high plank. Lower all the way down. Chaturanga all the way down to the mat. I'm going to move my blocks here. <laughs> Release the arms back. Find locust pose. Lift the legs. Straighten the legs. Lift the thighs. Lift the chest, open the chest, and then exhale, finding down dog. You can play with rising up to plank again, and then pressing back. The right leg steps forward. Let's take high lunge, so leave the back heel lifted, sweeping up here, using the strength of the legs to lift up, and then bring the hands back behind you. Now, if you need a strap to connect your hands, take it now, or even a kitchen towel, that will work. Otherwise, intertwine the fingers, bend the back knee for a moment, lower down, lift the chest. Have a soft bend in the elbows, move the hands away from the back, then open up here. And as you do, begin to straighten the leg any amount, opening up the front of the body, the front left psoas, draw the ribs in, and opening up the chest here for one more breath. And then release. Coming into a high plank, lower to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Step the left leg forward, take your time. Leave the back heel lifted here and rise to stand. Bend the right knee and sweep the hands behind you. Intertwine the fingers again. You can take the opposite thumb in front if you'd like. Find a soft bend in the elbows. Pull the arms back, lift the chest, opening the front of the shoulders, bend the back knee, lower down a little more, draw the ribs in, and then straighten that back leg, any mount, and open up here. Staying for a few more breaths, long tailbone, one more breath. Release the hands, high plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Finding up dog here. And exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Step the right leg forward. Inhaling, lift and rise. And with your right leg forward, take a twist. So placing the left hand to the inside of the right leg, lift and reach the right hand up. So you're facing the right knee, hug the right hip in and open up here. Sweep the arm up, either repeating that twist 
with the hand down or bring the hands to heart center, begin to lean and hook left elbow outside the right knee. Draw the shin forward and do that one more time. Hands come to heart center. Lean forward, hook the left elbow over the right knee and pull the left thigh back. I almost lost it. Lift the chest. Holding here. One more breath. Be active in the back leg and thigh and then place the hands to the mat and either coming straight into down dog or take a vinyasa. So chaturanga, up dog, down dog. And then Step the left leg forward, inhale, high lunge, and take a twist. Lean forward here, place the right hand down to the inside of the left foot, lift and reach with the left hand. Pull the right thigh up in space, hug the hip in, open the chest. Inhale, very slowly coming back up, either repeating the hand down in your open twist, or hands come to the heart, Lean forward and hook right elbow over left knee. And we'll repeat that. Moving slowly and mindfully here. Lift the chest, lean forward, hook. So think about this elbow moving down toward the opposite hip. Hands pressed together to help you revolve. Lift the back thigh actively. One more breath here. Slowly, slowly release, coming into high plank, and slowly bend the elbows all the way down to the mat. And relax your forehead to the mat for a moment. One more inhale, exhale. And then bring the arms out like the letter T. So you can rest your forehead to the mat. I'm going to turn my head and look at you as I do this, and then I'll straighten out my, my neck. So lift the left leg, pull it back in space as if I was pulling your leg out of your hip socket and lower that leg down. And then lift up the right leg, pull that right leg back in space and lower it down. Walk the legs a little bit closer together and think about the inner thighs spinning up to the ceiling. As you do, hug the ankles in. Lift the legs now as if they're one unit. Lift the arms, lift the chest. Lengthen the legs behind you and lift the chest a little bit more. Holding here, think about long legs, open chest, and then release down, stacking hands. Let the head rest. You can turn the head to one side or another. And we'll repeat this. This is Shalabhasana with an arm variation. So arms can come out to a T again, or the arms will come forward, much like we did when we're doing Ukatasana. So reach the arms forward here. Be long in the legs, draw the legs closer to one another. Lift the legs, lift the arms, lift the chest. Continue to lift and reach and try to bring the arms alongside the ears. Long in the neck. Lift and reach here. A lot of back strength. Open the chest. Two more breaths. Stay with it. One more. And lower everything down. And then you can bring your head to rest on the other side if you would like. And take a breath. Okay, here we go for Dhanurasana. Bend the knees, catch hold of the top of the feet. There's many variations here with the feet. You can point the toes or you can flex the feet. Just play with what feels good for you, to be honest. Arms are straight, you're holding the outside of the ankles. And knees draw a little bit closer together. And for this first one, just drop the hips down, lift the chest, hook the legs back and lift the thighs. Open the chest here. Think about the shoulder blades wrapping into the chest and tuck the chin down a little bit. Lift and reach. Fan the toes and release down. And take a rest.
So you should feel that invigoration happening as we do these back bends, opening up. And we'll do that one more time with a little surprise ending. So bend the knees, catch hold of the feet. This time use your leg strength. So kick the legs back, lift the knees up. Allow the knees to draw toward one another and lift the chest. Move the weight of the body into the pelvis area. Open up here. One more breath, straight into down dog. Point the toes, press down, lift up, and then slowly make your way into downward facing dog. If you need to take a cat cow in the middle, feel free to do so. Coming right into downward dog. Take a breath here. And then come to hands and knees for a moment. Pull the hips back and walk the hands out over to the left. So we're in a modified child's pose. As you do this, think about the right fingertips moving a little bit further ahead of the left and pull the left, I'm sorry, the right thigh back. So you're stretching the side of the body. Let the head hang. And then other side, walking the hands forward through a mini child's pose and then walking the hands out to the right. and then walk the hand center, and then bring yourself to where you're facing the side of the mat, and then standing up here for a moment, separate the feet, coming into wide-legged forward fold here. So feet press down, and the toes are facing forward. Pull the chest forward here, and either staying here halfway or folding in. From here, allow your awareness and attention to come to the inner thighs. So as if you could drag your feet toward one another, pull the feet closer together without actually moving the feet. So activate the inner thighs and let the head hang here. Move the inner thighs, squeeze them as you drag the feet closer, even though they're not moving as if they were. And then release that action for a moment and then step the hands forward, find down dog in Prasarita Parutanasana legs. So walk the hands forward, the hips stay in line with the ankles, the back is long, and you're not leaning too far on the hands here. And then step the hands over to the left and move the right fingertips to the right, pull the right hip back. And then second side, so walk the hands center, and then hands move to the right. As you do, move the left fingertips further away from the left hip. Let the head hang. And then walk back to center, hands come back, lifting up here, heel toe your feet together into a forward fold, Uttanasana and then bend the knees and come down to your knees. So we're taking Ustrasana, which is camel pose. And for the first few rounds, we'll take a block and we'll place it in between the thighs, just like so. If you need to, if your knees are bothered by standing on your knees, place a blanket underneath the knees. So for this first one, we'll leave our hands to the hips. Squeeze the inner thighs, and it's as if your inner thighs could move the block back in space. So try to do that action. Lengthen the tailbone, lift the chest, lift the hip points, roll the shoulders back, and then begin to lean back as if there's a bar behind your upper back, right here where the shoulder blades are, and you're trying to reach your upper body over that bar. Lift and reach here, head can come back, Squeeze the inner thighs together, move the block back in space, hug the ankles in, and then slowly come back up and release the block. So you can practice that action of squeezing inner thighs together and then moving the block back in space, or you can uh, move on with these blocks here on the outer ankles. So your choice how far the blocks 
down they are in Heiko. You'll practice with that right now. So hands to hips, hips over knees, inner thighs turning on, lift the chest and roll the chest open here. Begin to, almost like you're dragging your tailbone down, lengthen the tailbone down, lift the hip points, gaze down the body for a second, open the chest. And then for some, the head will come back and the hands will come back. So the arms will release back and your hands will come to the blocks. Lift the chest, fold. Slowly bring your hands to your hips, rolling back up and then sitting down on the heels for a moment. So it's a little hard to speak when I'm in that back bend with my neck back but when you do your neck you listen to how it feels so you can either continue to gaze down the body or the head can come completely back here so we'll do our camel pose one more time and you can take any variation the block in between the thighs the blocks down around the ankles or full camel where the hands come to the heels or even to the shins, so your choice here. So last time, knees are underneath the hips. Lift the chest, roll the shoulders back. Begin to lengthen the back of the body, almost like everything is moving down here and everything in the front body is opening up. And then I'll go silent as I move into camel pose, just so I can not talk funny. Lift the chest, open up, release. One more breath. Hands come to the hips, slowly come up. The head is the last thing to come up. Slowly bend at the hips and sit back. <sighs> Such a great pose for just opening everything up. I hope you felt a little bit more open, whatever option you took. So we're coming down now to the mat. We'll lie on our backs. We'll do our final back bending series here, lying on our back. So we'll take bridge pose first. As you make your way down to the mat, bring the feet flat, ankles underneath the knees. And just notice if the feet are a little bit too far ahead of the knees or if they're a little too close. You don't want the knees past the ankles either. You just want them right underneath what feels comfortable for you, but just not too far ahead. And if you'd like, you can do that variation again of bringing the inner thighs toward one another. A lot of your core activation and your back body, it's all connected, but having an inner thigh activated um, during back bending really does help. So you can use this as tactile feedback if you'd like. Or you can just release the box, press the heels down, lift the hips, do that rolling action, tailbone, mid back, upper back, and then tuck one shoulder under the torso, the other shoulder, intertwining fingers. You can always grab a strap to connect the hands. Press the upper arm down and lift the chest. Move the chest toward the chin and gently press the back of the head down. Notice that the knees are starting to splay out. Just bring them back in line with the hip points. Lift and reach here. And then slowly release the hands and make your way down upper back, mid back, lower back. Heel toe the feet wide and knock the knees together. They're just resting. And take a moment here. Inhale and exhale. So you have the option again to do bridge pose to repeat that or coming into wheel pose, Urdhva Dhanurasana. So your choice here. So for Urdhva Dhanurasana, your fingertips and palms come to the mat and your hands are just outside of your shoulders and the elbows, make sure they're hugging in. If you're in the preparatory spa uh, stages of wheel pose, go ahead and bring your hands back and you may not lift up but you'll press the hands down as you lift your hip up. Just be mindful of the neck. If it starts to bother you, come out of the pose and then come into a uh, bridge pose. 
But if you want to try the wheel prep pose, you can make your way to these first few steps. So hands just outside the shoulders, fingertips pointing toward the body and the elbows hug in. Gently press the lower back down into the mat for a moment and lengthen the tailbone. And for this first one, we'll come to the tops of our heads. So lift the lower back, mid back, upper back, and then come to the top of the head, hugging elbows in. And then from here, press the hands down, lengthen the arms, and lift the chest. Feel free to come to toes here. Be very active in the arms and legs. All the contact points are pressing down into the mat and just move the body a little bit forward toward the hands. Relax the neck. One more inhale, exhale. Knees drawing toward one another. And wherever you are, begin to make your way out of your pose, gently tucking the head down and release. Knees come together, feet come wide. And take a breath here. We have one more of those. So we won't stay in our resting too long. <laughs> so either repeating bridge pose or doing Urdhva Dhanurasana prep or Urdhva Dhanurasana, your choice. So just making your way straight in your, into your pose now. We've done all the steps, you know how to get there. Go ahead and press down the feet to lift up, finding your back bend. Hug the knees in, all the contact points, pressing down, very active, opening the chest. Hold here. One more inhale, exhale. And releasing down very slowly, mindfully. And knock the knees together the feet come wide. For a moment, gently close the eyes, place one hand to the chest, the other hand to the abdominal, and come back, noticing heart center, noticing the invigorating aspects of these poses, the back bending poses, noticing our strengths, honoring where we are today, being excited about that. We are all on our own journeys into becoming more of ourselves. So get excited and honor where you are right now. It's an exciting time in our lives. Gently blink the eyes open, release the hands, and begin to heel toe the feet wide, the knees come wide as well. And then drop both knees to the right you can open up the hands here. And then I like to hook my right foot on top of my left leg. And I can show you that again if you want to see how I did that. So feet come wide, the knees relax to the right side, and then I take, take my right ankle over my left knee. And just hold here. And then we'll come back to center. Release the ankle and then drop the leg to the other side. Take that left ankle over the right knee and relax. Take a moment. And then slowly release that mild twist. We'll come up to a seated position here. So coming into Dandasana staff pose. Lifting up here, bend the knees, catch hold of the backs of the knees here, and we'll come into Navasana. It's a little bit of countering, a little bit of uh, front body strength, release the arms. Knees can be straight or feel free to extend the legs here. Draw the knees closer to the body, trying not to round in the back. Lift the chest, open the chest here, holding Navasana coming into a revolved Navasana, so both hands can come to the right side, draw the knees in, lift the chest. Slowly come back center, and then repeat other side. So hands come to the left, trying not to swing the legs out to the right as you do. Lift the chest here. 
come back to center and release the legs down. Extend the legs out. You can move the flesh part of your seat back, lift the chest, catching hold of a strap if you'd like um, for our seated forward fold, Paschimottanasana. So pull the hips back as you release the hands forward. Long in the chest here for a moment, coming halfway up. So pull the chest forward, draw the navel in. And if you have lower back issues again, this will be pretty intense. So keep a bend in the knee or just come halfway down. Otherwise, catching hold of the feet, fold, folding forward. And for some, you can take a block if you'd like and rest your forehead to the block. Allowing the mind to settle down now in our seated forward fold. Staying here for a few more breaths. And then lifting the gaze arms can come by the ears as you come up to a seated position or just make your way up to sitting finding baddha konasana so bring the bottoms of the feet together press them together and then you can catch hold of the feet whatever is comfortable for you draw the feet closer to you and then lean forward any amount here so elbows can press down the inner thigh, move the chest forward here. Even in our seated forward folds, there's always an essence of a back bend. So move the sternum forward. For some, the forehead can come even further down. And then you have permission here, round the spine just a little bit to relax. And for today, you have the choice of either coming into Shavasana, where you lie down fully on your back, you allow your arms and legs to just flop open and relax, or finding a seated meditation. And for today, I will do a seated meditation here. So taking a blanket or a pillow, placing it underneath you, crossing the legs, draw the elbows back, making sure knees are more or less over the feet and palms can be uplifted or down, making sure elbows, forearms are drawing back, shoulders over hips gently, close the eyes. Noticing the sideward expansion of the breath in the torso. Bringing awareness to the vertical expansion of the breath in the torso. Bringing awareness to the center of the eyebrows. Just going a little bit deeper here moving that mind inward, moving the body into stillness. If the mind begins to wander, just drawing yourself back to that breath. From here, noticing yourself seated or lying on the mat, gently begin to wake yourself, bringing yourself back to this moment. Take a 
full breath in and full breath out. If you're lying on the mat, slowly roll to the right side of the body and come up to a seated position. Returning to your natural breath, draw the palms together at heart center. Bow the head, rub the palms. Cup the center of your warm palms over the eyes and open your eyes into your hands. Just looking into your hands for a moment. And then move the hands away from your face. And thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today for a nice back bending series. I hope you feel open, invigorated. Um, even just a few minutes a day of back bending will really improve your mood and just help to improve your overall well-being. I look forward to practicing again with you soon. Thank you so much.